In this tutorial, we learn how to find a vector's magnitude, also known as modulus. So let's go right ahead and get started. Say we're given a vector A with components 3 and 4, and we're asked to find this vector's magnitude. Well, a vector's magnitude is written as follows. We write the vector A in between two vertical bars, a bit like an absolute value. And this magnitude is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. In other words, it's equal to the square root of its x component squared, that's where I'm getting this 3 from, and its y component squared, which is where I'm getting the 4 from. We now calculate this. This equals to the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16. Carrying on, this equals to the square root of 9 plus 16, which is 25. And finally, since the square root of 25 equals to 5, we can state that the magnitude of this vector a is equal to 5. And we're done. But what does this magnitude of 5 actually mean? Well, let's try and illustrate that by drawing this vector a. And I'll do that on the grid that we have here. So I can draw this vector a using its x and y components and starting anywhere on this grid. So for instance, say I start at this red point right here. Remember, the fact that its x component is 3 tells me that starting from this red point, I need to move 3 units to the right, so that's 1, 2, 3. And the fact that its y component is 4 tells me that I need to move 4 units upwards, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4. The vector a is then the arrow joining our starting point to our finish point, like so. And we always label the vector by its name. There we go. This magnitude of 5 is equal to the length of this vector. In other words, if we were to draw this vector to scale with, say, 1 centimeter steps, then this red arrow would measure 5 centimeters. Or say we were drawing in inches, then this red arrow would measure 5 inches. And depending on the context, the magnitude of a vector can have different meanings. For instance, if this vector a represents the velocity vector of some moving object, then the length of this vector a, in other words its magnitude, would represent the speed at which that object is moving. So the greater the speed, the longer the vector. If on the other hand vector a represents a displacement vector showing us how to get from one point to the next, then the magnitude of a will represent the distance between those two points. Now, the good news is the method we've just used for finding the magnitude will always work. And in fact, we can generalize this with a formula. Given a vector, which I'll call v, with components x and y, we can calculate its magnitude with the following formula. Magnitude of v is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And if you hadn't seen that formula before, do make a note of it now. This is the formula for calculating the magnitude of a vector. Okay, now that we know the formula, let's quickly work through a second example. Let's say we need to calculate the magnitude of vector b, which has coordinates negative 2 and 3. Well, using the formula that we've just seen, we can state that the magnitude of b is equal to the square root of negative 2 squared and careful, when we have a negative component, it's worth writing it in parentheses as we square it, plus the y component squared, so that's 3 squared. We now calculate. This equals to the square root of negative 2 in parentheses squared, which means negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4, plus 3 squared, which is 9. Finally, the magnitude of vector b is equal to the square root of 13. And we stop there. Indeed, we cannot simplify the square root of 13 any further. But if you wish, you can check with the calculator. If we round to two decimal places, the square root of 13 is equal to 3.61. And there we have it. That's how we can calculate the magnitude, also known as modulus, of a vector. And that's it for this tutorial.